a brutally effective combat sport with a fascinating history, Muay Thai has captivated practitioners and fight fans from all over the world. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You, hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Muay Thai is also known as the art of eight limbs or the science of eight limbs. Practitioners use eight points of contact, these being kicks, knee strikes, punches and elbow strikes to tear down their opponents. The whole body operates as a unit and becomes a powerful weapon. In fact, Muay Thai strikes were meant to simulate actual weapons of war where the punches act like swords, the elbows become hammers, kicks are like spears, and the knees are akin to sharp daggers. The blocks, using shins and forearms, were meant to act as armor. The striking system, coupled with highly effective clinching and defensive techniques, as well as an intense conditioning regime, makes Muay Thai a force to be reckoned with in the world of martial arts. It was initially designed as a practical fighting system to use in warfare. It outgrew its initial design and gained international fame in the 20th century after practitioners defeated notable martial artists. Nowadays, Muay Thai is widely spread and the vast majority of MMA fighters incorporate the fighting style into their training. Number 4. Shock to the System Regardless the type of combat sport, it's safe to say that cutting down to make weight is a universally dreaded process. For 19-year-old Jordan Ko, Muay Thai was his passion and his love for the sport took him to Thailand. Originally from Madison near Falkirk, Scotland, Ko, who was known in the ring as Jordan Lamnamoon Muay Thai, was trying to drop down to 134 pounds. According to his trainer, in order to shed the remaining weight, Ko would run while wearing heavy gear. The brutal regime would eventually prove fatal for Ko, whom many referred to as an inspiration for the Muay Thai community. He was found dead in the Mong district of Bangkok by Thai police and a medical report stated that the combination of dehydration and overheating had plunged his body into shock. As the name suggests, Muay Thai originated in Thailand where it's been a national sport since the 19th century. King Chula Longkorn rose to the throne in 1868 and he had a personal interest in Muay Thai. His reign ushered in a golden age for the country and the sport which began taking its first steps towards modernization. Muay Thai eventually spread beyond the borders of its homeland and today it's widely considered to be one of the most effective striking based martial arts with thousands of gyms worldwide. A Muay Thai practitioner is known as a Nak Muay while foreign practitioners are sometimes referred to as Nak Muay Farang which translates as foreign boxer. Before a match begins, fighters wear a headband called a Mong Khan and armbands called Prajiad. This is reflective of Muay Thai's warfare origins. When the country was constantly at war, young men would wear a torn piece of a loved one's clothing into battle to bring them good luck and keep them safe from evil spirits. Before a fight, practitioners perform a ritual known as Wei Kru Ram Moi. Wei is a traditional Thai greeting performed by bringing the palms together in a sign of respect and Kru means teacher. Ram refers to dancing in a classical style while Moi translates as boxing. Therefore, the full term can roughly be interpreted as a war dance to salute the teacher. Through this ritual, fighters show gratitude and respect to their teachers, their parents and their ancestors. The fighter circles the ring in a counterclockwise direction and prays at each corner, bowing the head three times to salute Buddha, Rama and the Sangha or community of monks. 
Then the fighter begins the ritual dance, accompanied by music that provides a rhythm to the movements. The Ram Moy is also a personal statement, often providing clues about where the fighters are from and who trained them. Number 3. Cardiac Arrest In an amateur celebrity Muay Thai bout, a professional bodybuilder named Pradeep Subramanian squared off in Singapore against YouTube star and former Singapore Idol contestant Stephen Lim. Subramanian stepped in as a replacement for Lim's initial opponent, who couldn't compete due to insurance complications. This was the bodybuilder's first Muay Thai bout, and tragically, his last. Subramanian lost the bout and was rushed to the Singapore General Hospital immediately after, where he died from cardiac arrest. It's unclear why Subramanian died as all the participants had had a medical checkup prior to the bout. One theory is that as a bodybuilder, he wasn't accustomed to the high level of cardio needed for a Muay Thai fight. Subramanian wasn't a fighter, hadn't trained as one, and possibly his heart simply gave out due to exhaustion. The incident serves as a stern reminder of how demanding the sport is and further emphasizes the importance of a proper training regime. King Rama VII, who reigned between 1925 and 1935, continued the modernization of Muay Thai that began in the 19th century. While training or fighting foreigners, Thai practitioners would use modern gloves and groin protectors. However, rope binding over the hands was still used in fights between Thais. The rope binding, called kadchuk, hardened the hands and knots were tied over the knuckles, thus turning the hands into dangerous striking tools. After a death occurred in a ring, modern gloves were introduced. Around the same time, the name Muay Thai gained traction, while the style's older form became known as Muay Boran. To truly understand the killer mentality of Muay Thai fighters, we must travel back through folklore to its origin. Born from one man's fight for freedom, that man was Nai Kanum Tum. During the battles between Thailand, then called Siam, and the Burmese of the Kongbaon dynasty, Nai Kanum Tum, a renowned Siamese fighter, was captured and taken to Burma. Following the victory, the Burmese king, Mangra, organized a week-long festival. During the festivities, he wanted to know how Burmese boxing would fare against Moi Boran. Having heard of Nai Kanom Tom prowess in combat, the king gave him a chance to fight for his freedom. As Nai Kanom Tom began doing the way crew, the fighters and spectators thought it was black magic. He fought 10 fighters with no rest between the bouts and beat them all, thus proving the superiority of Moi Boran. The king was so impressed that he allegedly remarked how every part of the Siamese was blessed with venom. Nai Kanum Tum won his freedom and returned to Siam, a hero and with two beautiful Burmese wives. Although safer now than it used to be, it's fairly obvious why a sport that allows for elbows, which are among the hardest bones in the body, and knees to be planted directly into the skull of an opponent may have deadly consequences. Number 2. Split Lip When Robbie Lawler and Rory McDonald faced each other at UFC 189 to fight for the welterweight championship, fight fans were treated to a display of MMA at its bloodiest. As Lawler gave his winning interview inside the octagon, those present in attendance and viewers from around the world could see that his upper lip was severely split. UFC President Dana White described the injury in an interview saying he would talk and this part of the lip would move and the other part wouldn't. Although Lawler's injury was gruesome, what happened to Potok Torsurata looks like the worst split lip to date. 
It happened during a fight at Raja Damnern, a well-known Muay Thai stadium, and his lip was almost cut in half right down the middle. Muay Thai is a beautiful sport that can bring many benefits to a person's life, including discipline and overall improvement of health, increasing one's self-confidence and many others. Nevertheless, it's not without risks. Death in the ring is very rare, but has occurred in the past. Injuries range from bruises, sprains and cuts to broken bones, severe neck injuries, concussion and internal organ damage. If you're a beginner, even before you start training, it's very important you consult a doctor, preferably one with experience with fighters. Training for ties often begins as young as six, and because of the intensity of the sport, most fighters have short-lived careers in which they can participate in more than a hundred fights. If you plan on fighting professionally, then the best hope for survival, as obvious as it may sound, is being faithful to your training. Fighters rely heavily on strikes using the shin bone and thus proper conditioning of the shins becomes a must for avoiding injury. The Muay Thai clinch involves gripping the back of the opponent's head with both hands to minimize the distance and control the body. Developing stronger and more flexible neck muscles is necessary to avoid neck strain. Basically, the key to minimizing damage is a proper conditioning of the body coupled with intense cardio and strength training. During training, many fighters tend to power through moments when they feel sick. Remember that taking care of your body isn't the same as giving up or quitting on yourself. The tendency to push yourself past your limits may be seen as a display of heart and an admirable trait but it shouldn't be something that tears your health apart. Number one, skull fracture. This is probably one of the most horrific injuries to ever take place in combat sports. A pro fight that took place at Phuket's Patong Stadium. A fighter identified only as Jeremy from France took a brutal elbow strike from his Thai opponent. It caused a skull fracture, basically in the form of a hole in the middle of his forehead. A true testament to the toughness of Muay Thai fighters, Jeremy didn't even feel dizzy and even kept on fighting. Upon realizing the severity of the injury, the referee stopped the bout and Jeremy was taken to the hospital. His fracture was fixed with a titanium plate. Fortunately, he didn't sustain any brain damage and made a swift recovery. Despite extensive plastic surgery that had rendered him almost unrecognizable and a tendency to constantly change his hair, clothes and general appearance, Chupetta was ultimately captured with the help of voice recognition software. 